Good evening. This is Alana from Move in Faith Meditation and also from my other businesses that you might know me from, my other pages. Um, tonight I am going to be doing a special meditation that I haven't done in a long time for public. Um, I meditate every day, but I haven't done a live session for my page in a long time. Thank you. Um, could you introduce yourself so I know who I'm seeing? We've changed things on Facebook now, so I don't get names unless you let me know who you are. <laughs> Anyways, tonight I am doing a very special meditation. Uh, it's regarding this coronavirus situation, of course, and I am basically letting you into my private, my very private session um, that I I get very good results from. And um, I thought it would be worthwhile sharing this with people to, to let you know that you can get these same kinds of results. Uh, just, two, let's see, two nights ago now, I've been suffering on and off with this, this issue um, with, uh, oh boy, how do I explain this? Uh, it makes me feel kind of jittery inside and I knew something was happening in my lungs and um, I've been doing my stuff that I have been talking about and it's been working for clearing my throat, for clearing my sinuses, for clearing my mouth, of course, and um, what what they're just talk, starting to talk about, they've, they've mentioned it in one or two posts that I've seen. It has to do with how this coronavirus can travel from the, basically from the lungs to the heart. And that's what I experienced. Um, it, when it's that deep in you, it's really, really hard to get out. Really hard. And uh, there are ways to do it. Um, I was using one of those methods a couple nights ago. And I, I should be using this every day just to tell you that it's super important to be very diligent and to do these methods on a daily basis. Because, because if it gets into your body and it gets to a very deep level, it can be very hard to get out. But this is where meditation comes in. And I thank God every day that I know this method, that I have been doing it long enough now to, to get it to a point where I experience God's presence on a pretty, pretty much on a daily basis. And you can too. The method that I teach is very simple. It's meant for everybody to be able to do anywhere, literally anywhere, and whether you're in public or in private. And I, um, and literally, I, I meditate almost all the time. You wouldn't know it, but I do. And it's come to save my life on a very, very many occasions now. And this is one of them. Um, I'm going to teach you a method that's really simple, that's grounding. It's for, this is meant for people, I, I, I don't have to do this as much anymore, but occasionally I do, like tonight I'm going to teach you, it's a grounding method. Uh, the first step is grounding, uh, the second step takes you to a heart connection, and the third step is a very deep soul connection. My personal, my personal spiritual, my, my, ultimate spiritual guide for me is our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. And so, um, hence the cross. Okay. Um, but I'm saying that you can pray to whoever you want. You, you, you can pray to whoever you want, whoever you feel comfortable with, but I am telling you that, I mean, and that can be like the blessed Mary, blessed, um, blessed Virgin Mary, uh, God, the father himself, um, Lord Jesus, uh, you can pray to a spiritual guru if that's who you feel comfortable with. Um, this, after all, is affecting everybody worldwide. So, I mean, my preference is for
for Lord Jesus because I know the kindness and ultimate love and this because of the sacrifice that he made that none other in recorded history has made and and he is truly if you want to talk about saving your ass <laughs> pardon me but saving your ass literally that's what a savior does he saves your tuckus and that's what the Lord Jesus has done on so many occasions for me that I call him my savior because he has literally saved my ass from death a couple of times now and saved my life and in absolute reverence and love I owe my life to him and you will come to know his absolute love and gentleness and tenderness and everythingness for you. If you desire to put your trust in him, you will not be disappointed. Anyways, um, like I say, I'm letting you into something very private for me. And so I welcome you with open arms and, uh, and let's begin. Um, oh, again, I guess my, my, my story, just to let you know, what can happen because I'm not going to I'm not going to talk much once I get into this but my story from just two nights ago now was I was feeling I knew something happened it went from my lungs to my heart I could feel that happening oh thank you whoever you are please let me know it'd be nice to know who you are <laughs> um, with a comment um, um, basically I'll get into my story it's one of many, I mean, I've had this experience many times, and so I know that what I'm sharing with you will yield results for you. I know that it will yield a connection to God. I know that you will wind up feeling, perhaps, sometimes it happens on the first time, you, you end up feeling this ultimate peace that transcends everything, and it, you take it, it, ta it goes even further than that, because you end up experiencing a healing, and that's exactly what I had um, for for a couple weeks. Well, yeah, a couple weeks. I can say I've been fighting this thing in my lungs. Okay, and it the lungs don't have the normal um, nervous nerve endings that others other organs do in the body, and so when there's an intruder in your lungs, you generally don't have the feeling of it because your lungs don't experience pain and but if you have a certain level of awareness then that you feel it uh, like me I'm very aware and it's only because of meditation that I've gained this awareness so I knew something was happening like I say in my lungs and I had done the I had done the steam method, the venting method that I told you about, um, and it was to help clear it out, and it opened up my sinuses, which was perfect. It opened up my nasal passages. I was able to blow my nose. And anyways, um, like I said, I don't know if I don't know if it was Corona or just a regular, whatever, cold virus, whatever. But I knew something was there and I could literally feel it move to my heart. And when it gets to your heart, it's very serious. It is very serious. So there's a couple of methods there. Of course, there's some antibiotics, but I don't take antibiotics. There's um, a certain, um, you can do the oil pulling method and that will pull it out of your heart. That takes about, depending on how much you've done previously for clearing that will draw it out with the lymph and that takes about 15 to 20 minutes of constant swishing um, and doing it a couple of times so it's not just a one-time thing it's usually several times to clear out the lymph and then I have a third thing that I have yet to share with you but I've been I used that a couple nights ago so I know that can kill it but whatever it was it traveled to my heart and so the first thing I did was I resorted to the method that I'm going to be teaching you. Uh, and I got to a very, very deep level within me. 
And I just did my focusing that I'm going to be teaching you tonight. And I'm going to be doing with you. And because I do this so often, um, I was I found myself in the presence of the Lord, and within minutes, that shaking that it caused in my heart, that ex excessive nervousness and fear and pain, because there's a little pit, pit, bit of pain with that. It was gone. Like it was gone. Like, 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 I don't feel that anymore. I had been plagued with that for a very good long while preceding the corona thing. So when I experienced the it's gone, like I knew that he had taken care of it. Okay. And that's what I'm going to teach you today is how to get to that point where you can experience that utter release and peace of knowing that he is present there with you. And then you can experience that miracle, that miraculous moment where it's just gone. Whatever's ailing you is gone. And that is utterly fantastic. So that is the point of meditation is to put yourself into the presence of God and just be listening with an open heart and I'll talk a little bit my method is not like other methods um, uh, the part of my meditation that makes it work is that you have to be willing to let go of everything even this corona thing, for as bad as it is. When I was experiencing the heart thing and the, the pain and the, the, the fear of it, I had to let go of that completely. That's what become, that's what's that's what takes training to do. Most people can't do it the very first time. You do it the first time and it's a fluke. Then you find that you start doing repeating the method and this becomes, um, you're training yourself. You're training yourself to let go so that you can get to the point where you're just focusing, focusing on your ultimate spiritual ideal. Like I say, mine happens to be the Lord Jesus. You can focus on Father God, Mother God, Universal Consciousness. Go for the Lord. Wonderful. How can survive in this crisis? Yes, indeed. Because when you don't have any other method, I'm right now helping people who are in Africa, who are poor, like who don't, who barely have anything to eat, who are, I am helping them with what's called neem. They have neem that grows wild for them. And and I'm teaching them to make a tea and to um, use it for venting, what I call venting. It's You'd have to see my, join my Corona V with Alana group. I talk about it there. But this meditation method adds to everything else that you might be doing to help you. And it's like, it could be your very first method of survival and your last method of survival. And everything else you do in between supports that. So that God knows that you're taking these actions to help yourself. So you're not, you see, he gives us knowledge to use. But he's saying, I will, you go and do what you know to do and leave the rest for me. And where you can't reach, I will take care of it. So what I'm going to teach tonight is where we settle into, I want to teach you two methods that lead up to it so you, we can ground ourselves. And the third thing is the meditation where we just focus. And I teach you, this is, I'm not going to talk at that point. So just remember this is that we get, when we get to that stage, I'm going to do a brief explanation and then we're going to 
settle into that piece and you're going to focus and it's very simple to do very simple and and anyways let's get started okay so the first thing that i teach you to do is to ground yourself oh and like i say how can you survive my experience is that when you get to a point with the focus that i'm going to teach you is that what will happen is that there will be a release inside of you and in that moment you will feel utter peace and love and you will sometimes there's just this emptiness but you are just letting go in faith in faith and then usually my experience anyways it can happen it can happen within hours so that after this you're going to go to bed and you are going to just sleep wonderfully well and it might happen as your body relaxes more all of a sudden the pain will leave whatever was whatever was distressing your body germs can suddenly be gone like literally gone by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. I cannot explain it any better than that. So this is a really special method. So that's how I survive. I put everything that I know to work, which I've been doing with my Corona V with Alana group, and I teach you simple methods. And then where all of that doesn't reach, that little bit, then we come to the meditation. And this just wow it just fills in where we can't get to okay so i use everything everything so let's begin okay the first thing that i do is is i do a simple grounding so you can you don't have to assume any special position i cannot personally sit on the floor with my legs in a lotus the lotus position because it cuts off my circulation, my legs get all tingly, my feet fall asleep and feel like prickly ginger ale, and I just can't sit like that. I never could, even as a child. It just, it's just part of me. So sit in a chair. Uh, if you sit with one that has a straight back, like I'm, I'm sitting in an office chair. There we go, yes. My God, he good to punish us for our wrongdoing. You know what? God can sometimes be harsh because we need we haven't been getting the lesson and changing our ways beforehand. But God ultimately is loving. So loving. And he gives us so many chances to redeem ourselves. And now, quite honestly, I think the world was just getting crazy beyond belief. For too many things in politics in health and religion all of it just getting too crazy business just horrible and um, anyways that's a whole other discussion let's stick with what we're here for we're here to learn how to meditate and connect with God so that we can experience that extra where we're missing okay and we are going to we're going to go that extra mile okay that is us opening ourselves to god so here we go the first exercise is the simple grounding one many of us have become very disconnected to even ourselves so that we don't even know how to make a connection with ourselves. The first part is connecting with ourselves. So what we're going to do is I want you to just to sit back in your chair. Okay, I have an office chair. That's it, a rolling office chair. Put your arms down on the side. You're going to close your eyes. We're gonna start by, well, if your eyes are closed, you can't see me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, 
I want you to bring your attention to the tip of your nose, just to the tip of your nose, okay? And you're going to bring your focus and attention there. And you're going to breathe in. And you're going to feel the air coming up through your nostrils. And just breathe normally. Bring your attention into your nose. Gonna bring it up into your nose, into your sinuses. Breathe in and out. Feel the air as it passes through your nasal passages. Feel the coolness of the air as it comes in and the warmth of the air as you breathe out. I want you to bring your attention now to the back of your throat. Breathe out gently. Bring your attention now to the back of your neck. That's right, the back of your neck. Bring your attention now to down behind your lungs and your heart. attention now to back behind your stomach at your waist. Bring your attention now to your bum where you're sitting. Bring your attention now back up to behind your stomach. Feel your stomach expanding and contracting as you breathe in and out. Attention now behind your heart. Bring your attention to the base of your neck, where you're back, the top of your shoulders, the base of your neck. Attention to the back of your head behind your eyes. Bring your attention to the top of your head. Bring your 
attention back to the front of your face, at the top of your nose. attention to the tip of your nose. Open your eyes slowly. That's my first exercise for helping you to ground yourself. It brings your attention from out here in the world back to your body because this is where we can experience the fullness of God when we make the connection. Now I'm going to bring you to the second exercise and this helps to open up your heart because if your heart is too fraught with fear and with worry it's very hard to relax and to feel love. And so now what I'm going to do is teach you a very simple exercise that's going to help you to reconnect with your heart. Okay? And the first thing you do is you're going to take your, in this case my right hand, and you're going to cradle, you're going to touch the side of your mouth like this, you're going to cradle your jaw, okay, like I am here, you're going to take your other hand, your left hand, you're going to do one of two things, whichever one is easy for you. You're going to put it around your waist, okay, or like this, on your shoulder, on your arm, you see, and holding the back of your arm here, a little bit around the front, whichever one is easiest for you. So again, this exercise is going to help you to open your heart, to let go of fear, to feel love. And in this time with the coronavirus and social distancing, you might be alone. And this at least gives you, it gives us that human touch again that allows us to feel loved in this time of isolation. Like you might not be able to join with your family and vice versa. Right? Hugs are a scarcity right now. And so this very simple exercise allows you to feel love again. And this is so important. This is an important precursor to feeling love from God. Because when we have become jaded, it's hard to trust, right? It's very hard to trust. And so this helps you to know that you can trust again. You can let go of the fear and you can allow yourself to feel love. And that's really, really important for all of us right now in this period of social isolation. Okay, so again, you're going to create, take your right hand. We're going to start with our right hand. I'm going to set my timer here. This is a basic, a, a three minute exercise and we rotate from side to side. It ends up being 12 minutes in length total, but I swear you will feel so wonderful after you do this exercise. It's very powerful. I even challenge you to do it for five days in a row and you just watch how you'll feel after five days. You will feel so loved <laughs> so loved so my gift to you take this okay i'm going to start my watch here right hand cradling here very important where i'm positioning okay you position the same way i'm grabbing my arm here back of the arm and cradling it and now we're going to close our eyes I just want you to give yourself a gentle hug. And I want you to muster up as much feeling of love as you possibly can. And you just hold yourself like it's your mama holding you. Or somebody that you love, love, love so much. And you just 
feel like you're being hugged and held by them right now. Tilt your head into your hand. yourself feel it as much as you can. down deep inside if you need to. Give your arm a squeeze. Move your hand, your left hand if you want to, to your waist. Give yourself a hug. Let's come out of that. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. We're going to switch sides now. So now you're going to take your left hand, you're going to cradle. This is important. The positioning of your hand is really important because the places that I'm telling you to touch are places that respond to the emotional touch, respond to human touch. And they send a very powerful message to the heart and to the mind that says, you are cared for, you are loved. So you're going to position again, you're going to position your fingers behind your ear here. You're going to cradle your jaw and you're going to position your hand here right by your nose, right by the outer edge of your lips. Okay. You can hold it with your hand like this, but now it's time to grab the other side of the arm. And I'm going to start my watch and let us begin. Okay. So you get used to this feeling, what it feels like to be cradled. And just hold yourself. Imagine that it's your favorite aunt or your favorite uncle, your grandfather, your grandmother, or your mom when you were little, and you were held and you were loved and you felt the love. That's what you want to feel now. Give yourself the feeling of that memory. Squeeze your arm, squeeze the back of your arm, and then squeeze your jaw a little bit with your hand, just a little bit gently, and that says, I love you. Use 
is your arm. So your left hand to your waist, or your right hand to your waist, I mean. Give yourself a squeeze. Here we go, now we're gonna swap sides again, and this time we're going to add another element to it. This time, as you cradle your, with your right hand, okay, remember you have, you're gonna have fingers along your neck, or you're gonna have one finger behind your ear, two kind of under your jaw and on your neck. You're going to have your thumb here because you're touching some important emotional energy points. These are points that just, have you ever tried to cradle a little one in your hand and you say, mama loves you, mama loves you, okay? Well, this is what we're, we're kind of going back to is that feeling of being cradled and loved. And so now what we're going to do is we're doing it to ourselves, okay? Now you can also hold your hand like I am. Another way to do it. And what you'd simply say now this time is you're going to you're going to imagine that maybe it's God, or like I say, your favorite uncle or your favorite aunt or your favorite or your mom or your dad, your grandfather, your grandmother, whoever held a, a important place in your heart, such that when they said something to you, they just you just felt so loved. You know, you just felt so loved with them. And that's what you want to feel. And so now what we're doing is we're going to close our eyes. You're going to remember, you're going to take your arm here because this arm, this part of the arm also has emotional significance for people, for us. When somebody holds you there, you know there's a feeling of love for you, right? Of caring, especially when it's done the right way. And so right now we're holding ourselves here or we're holding ourselves at the waist. And so now this time we're going to close our eyes and we're going to say our name. So for me, I'm going to say, I love you, Alain. You know, for Maud, is that your first name, Maud? Maud? Then you would say, I love you, Maud. I love you. If your name is Sharon, I love you, Sharon. I love you. If your name is Brian, I love you, Brian. I love you. You know, if your name is Jacques, I love you, Jacques. If your name is Raoul, I love you, Raoul. If your name is Melody, I love you, Melody. And just say your name, I love you. I love you. So now let's do this, and here we go. Say it with all the feeling you can. I love you. I love you, Alana. You say your name. I love you. Move your hand, your left hand, cradle your right hand. Just say, I love you.
by quickly, actually, doesn't it? Now we're going to change sides, okay? Now you're going to cradle again. Positioning is very important. Positioning so that you're touching, there's certain emotional points that are here, okay, right on the outside of your lip, by your nose, you're cradling in front here, and then behind your ear, and two on your neck, okay? And you're going to squeeze gently, position your hand. You can position your right hand over your left. You can also move your arm here and move it to your waist. So you can change it as you feel your need. And now again, you're going to say your name as if it's your grandmother who's saying it or your mother who's saying it, somebody who means so much to you. Or imagine that you're being held by the Lord Jesus or Buddha, or whoever, whoever gives you that connection to God, to God the Father, okay? Who loves each of us more than anything, okay? So now, here we go. This is our last time. Make it count. <laughs> here you go. I'll imagine the Lord Jesus just holding me in his arms. And I love you, Willamette. And I love you. I love you. Make sure you hear your name. I love you. I love you, Willamette. I love you. your hand at your waist and give yourself a squeeze, a hug. Just say, I love you. I love you. Say your name. I love you. So now this has been a really, I hope you felt the love. I felt the love. It gives you such a warm feeling inside, lets you know that you're really cared for. That's what's super important. Now we're going to move on. We're going to, now that we've felt this love again in our heart, it helps to open us up with a willingness and a readiness to receive and to be in the presence of God whether it's the Lord Jesus, God the Father, or the Holy Spirit, or whoever your ultimate spiritual ideal is that connects you to God, okay? So now what I do, again, this involves a little bit of imagination, and um, it helps to put you in the presence of God or the presence of the Lord Jesus as in don't feel affronted but that's who I pray for you know who that you know that already okay so here we go this gets very personal very personal here this is what I do I imagine that God or Jesus in this case is standing right here like here's my nose <laughs> He's that close, okay? 
He's not way over yonder across the field. He's not outside my house. He's not 20 miles away. He is right here. He can be at that end of the room, but no, I prefer him to be right here, like he's standing right in front of me, okay? And, because literally God tells us whether I think it's in the, for sure in the Bible, but I think in the Quran too, and in the uh, whatever holy book that you follow, is that if you believe God to be far away or Jesus to be far away, then he's going to be far away. But if you believe him to be up close, he's as close as you want to bring him. So literally, we're talking like right there. Can you get any closer than that? No, I don't think so. Okay, but I do one more thing because I will tell you, Jesus you got to be respectful in front of our holy ones, okay? you got to be respectful. God does not like any shenanigans. He does not really tolerate disrespect. you got to be respectful in front of God. You want his help? He's the big man, okay? He's, he's the one. Like, don't mess with him, okay? He is not open to a lot of the... the lackadaisical rules that we've set up in society now there's some rules when you go into God's company and you got to be respectful really if you want to get his attention you got to be respectful and you got to be humble and you got to know that he can see right into your heart like he knows if you're trying to pull something or trying to con him into something. Like, he is not up to that, okay? Like, seriously. No, you got to be respectful and you got to be humble. Now that we've opened our hearts, so this is what I do. I don't do it physically, although you can if you want to. And on occasion when I feel draw, drawn to do this, I actually do. But I close my eyes. I imagine that he is standing literally like right like at the end of my knees because I'm sitting down. So he's standing like right in front of me, right? And I just imagine myself getting down on my knees. And I know people from the Middle East will, will relate to this a lot because you are, when you go to pray, you're often like really humbling yourself you are you know bent over on the ground not just kneeling I mean you are like down there and that's what I do I imagine that I am well hold on here let me show you okay Ugh. here we go oh lord god <laughs> I'm getting older okay so it's not always so easy <laughs> But here we go. You know, like you're like this. Like, can you see? I I can't I can't tell here. Um, you see how my my legs are bent like that? Okay. Yeah. And you know how? Uh, you know how our Middle Eastern cousins do the praying where their head is down? Okay, like this. Like you're literally like. Can you see me? <laughs> okay. Well, I imagine that I'm like that before Jesus. Yeah, because. Truly, he's the master. And I'm just grateful to be in his presence. I told you, I'm letting you into my personal space, okay? And I am most reverent before the Lord. And you just want to love him. Because he is so kind, ultimately kind and loving. He will save you from the shit. Any kind of wicked disease. 
You just got to be willing to put everything aside for him. You give up everything and it's okay because you know what? He knows what's bothering us. But when we have enough love in our heart just to bring our focus totally on him. When he talked about, when he talks about even in the Quran and I think in the Bible, because I know he's a prophet in the Quran, so. But when, when, when they talk about in the holy book about leaving your nets behind, this is what they're making reference to. Leaving our troubles behind. Bringing our focus only on God. Only on Jesus. And that's what we do. That's what I do in this. Is I imagine that I am down on my knees like this and he is standing he is standing in front of me. And I am too much of a I hate to say I don't I don't think in terms of sinner. Although in a lot of Christian religions you think of just a sinner. And yes, I am a sinner, okay? But I just I just let go of my ego. And I kind of believe that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not worthy to even look at his face, his glowing face that is just radiant beauty and light. And I just, if I'm just, I'm like the little child that, you know how a child will just run up to you especially if you're the mama and just be happy to be with you and they will cling to your pant leg or your leg and they're just like just especially when there's somebody around that they don't like or they're afraid right and they'll just run up and they'll just be happy to like if they see you and they know that you're there they're just happy to be there because they know they're safe because you're there well, that's how I am around Jesus that's how you gotta be at least that's how I am I just I'm just so grateful to be in his presence that he's there. I just, I let go of everything. I just focus on his feet. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but that's all that I do. I just imagine that he is there in front of me in his sandaled feet. And I just kind of... I'll show you. It's kind of like the table. See this table? Okay. And I imagine that he's there. Hold on here. There's my slipper. Okay. There's my slipper. And I just imagine that Jesus is there except he's got his bare feet. And I'm just kind of reaching out. Like, and I am just kind of imagining that even just touching his slipper or his sandal is just just touching the edge of his big toe in that moment I'm getting everything of him we get everything we get all of his power all of his love everything just by being even an inch away, even if you don't have the courage to even, or the, you don't even feel worthy enough to touch his, the edge of his sandal, or in this case, the edge of my slipper. Even if you're just like that, you're just like that, and you're just saying, I love you. That's all you have to say. You just let go of all your trouble. You just let go of all this corona business. You just let go of anything, any financial problem. You just let, you just take it in the palm of your hand and you just do what I do. It's this. It's called the release. You just let it go. You just let it go. And you bring your focus right in front of you. And you focus only on his big toe. <laughs> you just focus on his big toe and you just say, I love you, Lord. I love you. 
that's what we're going to do now, okay? Except I'm going to get myself up off my knees here. <laughs> I do this in my imagination. So that's all you have to do. Just do it in your imagination. <clears throat> so you can be sitting down anywhere. Literally anywhere. Oh, and doing this. So you just imagine that you are yourself in front of your ultimate spiritual ideal. I do it in front of Jesus. And we're just going to do that now, okay? Remember, he's right here. Like, really, or right in front of your knees. And he's just standing, like, right here. And you're going to get yourself down there in your imagination. You're going to be at your foot. And so what's going to happen is as you bring yourself down there in your imagination, remember when we did the grounding exercise, the first exercise that helped you to reconnect with your body? You're going to feel your awareness going down to the end of your tailbone. Okay? That's where you're going to end up being when you are at his feet, in your imagination, with your head down. Your awareness is going to be Drop down, and that's where you want it to be. You have to join me on other times to be privy to what happens. <laughs> it's bloody incredible, I'll tell you. So right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to close our eyes. You're going to imagine that your most holy one is right here in front of you. And you're going to humble yourself in your imagination or physically if you want to. And you are going to get down on your hands and knees and you're going to bow your head and you're going to bring your focus on his feet, on his big toe. And every time there's a thought, another thought that comes in, you're going to just focus on his big toe. Imagine that you're looking at his foot. Nothing else counts. Nothing else in the whole wide world. You are bringing all of your focus right there. And you are saying, I love you. I love you, Lord. You don't have to be repeating I love you all the time. But always make sure that in your imagination you are seeing his foot. Keeping your focus just on his foot. Nothing else matters. You are in his presence. You are bringing your focus just on him and you are letting go of everything else in the world. Nothing else is as important as focusing just on him. Sometimes our imagination kind of gets on because we're not trained this way. Remember to bring yourself down your thoughts start wandering, bring yourself back down, right in front of you. He's that close. When he's that close, you can't help but focus. Bring yourself down. Bring yourself down to his feet. You're kneeling before him. Your head is down and your feet are, your hands are just reaching out to touch his, touch his toe. Touch the edge of his sandal. It's enough. Focus on what that would feel like. He's right there. He's right there.
Remember when you have difficulty, if, you're, if your thoughts wander, he's right, standing right in front of you. Bring yourself down to the floor in your imagination. And just focus on his feet. Focus on his foot. Just focus on him.
And can you focus on his feet? Or a sandal on the edge of it? Think of how lucky you are to be in his presence. How grateful you are. Just to be near him, know that you are safe and loved. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Becoming aware of your tailbone, that's a really good thing. That's where you want your, you know, if you feel your presence is there. But then you know you're down by his feet. You're just loving him. Giving him all your attention. Lord, reach out to all those that are here with me now, Lord, or that are watching this replay, the replay when it plays. Please, Lord, be with them. Give them your love, Lord, your protection. you have with me, Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for loving them too, Lord. Giving them your protection, Lord. And you can continue that for as long as you want. You can do that any time. You can do that when you're laying in bed at night. If you experience any pain, actually I might do that tomorrow night because it's already been how long? Oh my gosh, you're kidding. Whew, we've been here like an hour and 20 minutes. Can you believe it? Holy cow. But this is something you don't want to do on a rush, okay? You don't want to do this and feel rushed. You can do any part of this meditation at your leisure. If you feel like you're not grounded and you're overcome by the world, start by doing a grounding meditation to bring your, your, your attention and your focus back to you. If you're um, not feeling loved, 
do that part of the meditation that helps you to feel loved and cared for again. The self-hug, do that. If you're feeling, when you're feeling like you've done that and you're laying in bed at night, that's a really good time just to close your eyes and bring your focus as if the Lord is right there standing in front of you or right by your bedside. And just imagine that you're at his feet again and you're just letting go of all the cares of the world and all the problems with the coronavirus and any illness, any financial difficulties, you're just letting it go. You're just letting it go. You're bringing your focus entirely on him. And then begin to watch and see the miracles that start unfolding in your life like I have many times. And so I might do this again tomorrow night. I don't know. <laughs> um, there's something else that I do, but it's already been long enough. So thank you for joining me. Tomorrow night I'll probably do another meditation session. Hopefully it'll be shorter. I never know when these things start. I just, you have to go with the flow because because you'll see, you'll get to know if you're, when you're in the presence and you feel the presence, you, you don't want to break that off. I mean, that's like gold. That's better than gold. This is what heals. This is what bring, brings peace. This is what transforms your life. You don't want to cut that off, right? Makes sense, huh? At least that's my feeling. So thank you for joining me. Um, leave your comments. If you would like to give me an honorarium for my time, kind of like um, because it helps me, um, I would appreciate that too. I'll put up a link and if you want to give me some money, I'll appreciate it. I won't turn it away. <laughs> um, yeah, because I need it too right now. So thank you. Join me again. Um, leave me your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. See what your takeaways are from this. Um, join me again tomorrow night uh, or, or my next time. Watch for, my, watch for my post. Like my page. That'll be great. Like my page. Follow me. Then you'll get my notifications for my next, my next Facebook Live meditation session. It might be tomorrow night or it might be Monday night. What are we? Is this Saturday night already? goodness yes Saturday night you know Monday kind of blends into the next right because we don't have if you don't have to go to work then you have nothing calling you to for it to be a specific day right oh although Easter is coming up oh oh my god yes I will be doing special meditations coming up on Holy Thursday which is the night of the Last Supper I will be doing one on Friday, Good Friday. I will be doing my own Vigil of the Light on Saturday night, which is the, when he rose, and Sunday, Easter Sunday. I will be doing that. Wow, that's fantastic. Wow, I will be doing that. So, my friends, thank you for joining me. I'll see you, um, I'll see, who knows? Like I say, follow me, like me, <laughs> love me, <laughs> um, and, and I'll see you very shortly because this is a holy week coming up. So thank you again. Bye for now. <laughs>